For more than 100 years, the Tonawanda Armory, now known as the Tonawanda Castle, has presided over Delaware Street in the city of Tonawanda with an unmistakable historical elegance. This former National Guard Armory is one of the area's most distinguished historical gems, but also one of its best kept secrets. And in 2003, the Armory was a building no one wanted. History was for sale to the highest bidder. New York State contains the country's finest collection of military armories, and the Tonawanda Armory was one of more than 100 armories built throughout the state between 1799 and 1940. The majority of these roughly 120 armories were constructed in the last quarter of the 19th century. These mammoth buildings were used for arm storage and as militia clubhouses. Most were constructed as castle-like fortresses, imposing structures that visually symbolized New York's military strength. New York State, uh, you know, the state's motto or nickname is the Empire State. And there was a reason for that. I mean, it was a very powerful state. Uh, just like today, back then, it was a center of commerce and finance. And uh, as an example, during the Civil War, New York State had provided over a hundred regiments of men, which is more than any other state had done. Uh, and that represents roughly a hundred thousand men. Uh, and many, many lives were lost. But it was realized too that New York being the Empire State, we had to have a system of armories to house and train these troops. So at one point, New York State went on a building binge and uh, they had over a hundred armories throughout the state. And this way the men could, had a central place that they could come. It was centrally located and easy to get to because not every, well, there weren't automobiles in the days when this was built. And uh, you could get to the armory and uh, you could drill, your equipment would be here and everything. So everything that you needed to become that professional soldier, at least on a part-time basis, was here. In 1897, the Tonawanda Castle was built for the 25th Separate Company of Western New York's 4th Brigade. The building was designed by Isaac Perry in the Richardsonian Romanesque architectural style. It was considered one of his most luxurious and expensive projects. But by 2003, it appeared as if the armory had outlived its usefulness. That year, New York State offered the historical armory to the city of Tonawanda for a dollar and some change, but the offer was declined. The building then went for private auction and was purchased for a mere $71,000, a price that was around $14,000 less than the cost of building this amazing structure in 1897. It seemed like an impossible steal, 38,000 square feet of property for less than the price of a house. But the low price represented the extensive restoration work this historic building badly needed. The first time I walked through this building, and when I walked in, I saw is a giant building with a lot of, uh, in the, it was in the sad shape, it required a lot of attention. The outside of it is required some brickwork. Inside of it, the plaster walls were falling and every inch of the inside of the building is required painting. The hardwood floor has been covered with PVC tiling and those area which was not covered is required a lot of attention and the lower floor has some, caused some water damages. But the second time and the third time I was walking through this building, it started dawn on me. This building is a beautiful building with the rich in histories and it has some cosmetic damage to it due to the years of not anybody attend to it, but it can be saved. I really believe these historical building, it should, be, uh, the, it should be part of the community and it should not be owned by private individuals. But however, this building, we didn't have a chance. The building was sitting on the auction block and I decided to jump in and try my, to the best of my ability, trying to restore it and bring the old glory and history back into it and let the community enjoy it. And considering current economic circumstances, New York State is tightening its belt. Many of the remaining historic armories are facing the same fate the Tonawanda Armory did in 2003, the auction block. Armories were closed because they were being underutilized. And, uh, you know, it is a horrendous expense to heat and light these places. 
And so uh, a lot of them uh, became uh, victims of their own uh, immensity, so to speak, just too expensive to heat and light, so they've closed. And I think today now, uh, starting from over 100 of these at one point, uh, now it's down to less than two dozen. A lot of the other ones have been sold off, particularly this beautiful Tatawanda Armory, and uh, they have uh, been reused in other ways that are, again, of benefit to the community, just like the National Guard was. My name is Sarah Tambacucci and I'm involved in public relations here at the castle and we held this event called A Day of Memories where we just opened up the castle to the entire community and asked them to come in and share their experiences and their memories of the building with us. And a lot of people came through the building that day and we just heard so many great stories. You know, we have this old picture that somebody gave us when the armory was first purchased and it's a bunch of guardsmen lined up in front of the building taken in the 1940s and we had no idea really what the picture was about but on that day you know we finally got the story behind it it was a bunch of guardsmen took this picture after they finished clearing snow off of the railroad tracks after a really big blizzard and you know we hear we heard how people in the community played basketball in the drill hall in the 1920s the boy scouts would meet in the drill hall the pool in the basement in the 1970s was used for, uh, I believe it was water safety classes. Just a lot of really interesting stories and um, the people who came through were excited to tell their stories and they really genuinely appreciated all the restoration work that had gone into this building. This building, you know, it means a lot. It's very special to a lot of people in this community and to see that and to see their appreciation, it was really humbling. And they've done a remarkable job on the whole building as a whole and re redoing what make it really make it look original. I'm very pleased with what I see. There's so few of them left uh, that are taken care of, you know, that's, it's a history. It's, I mean, it's a history and, uh, well, people don't have anything to do with war. They don't want, they want to put it aside. And it's, and it's wrong because you, you gotta, you gotta keep that history, you know. I know I never had a fight in a war and I'm thankful for that. And I know a lot of friends that, you know, look, we're lost in the war at the same time. But then there's a lot of them are still around. But I, I mean, I'm hitting, I'm 78 now. I've lost a lot of friends just in the, through the guard units that have served time in the war. And I think it should always be kept in remembrance. It's a, it's our country. You know, we gotta, we gotta put up with these things and have them here for as long as they'll last. And to use it now is in such a special way to put on where people can come in and they can still enjoy the parties, weddings and whatever in an atmosphere like this. Really love this building. After spending about five years to finish it up, it turned out to become a beautiful building. And uh, I, trust me, I do know the financial challenge required to restore this historical building. And I do understand why New York State and some other government agency, they make sometimes this decision to release this building from as a part of their building they own because it is very expensive to maintain it. But however, I really believe that the day one when I walked into this building until now, we can generate I can bring this building to the phase two of his life, restore glory of it, and let community enjoy it. And, uh, and I hope I had done a, a good job on it, and hopefully this building would be restored for my generation and the future generations. When Tambacuchi purchased the Tanawanda Armory, people were very skeptical of his vision. But he persevered, and the results speak for themselves. A private investor single-handedly preserved history. 
and it wasn't easy. Tampacucci and his staff encountered many unanticipated challenges, but after years of hard work, this historic building has been restored in a way that honors its glorious past. The spacious rooms, beautiful woodwork, and unique architecture have come back to life. And there's no reason these results can't be replicated. Tampacucci hopes this renovation may serve as an example or a model for other New York State armories that may face similar circumstances. The history of these magnificent buildings is far from over.